Inventory, Raw Material, WIP, Finished Goods Have you ever wondered how the products you use every day make it from raw materials to the finished goods in your hands? The journey is a fascinating one, and it all revolves around inventory management. Our journey starts with raw materials. These are the basic components of every product, unprocessed and untouched. Raw materials can be anything from the cotton in your shirt to the metal in your car. Raw materials can be commodities or components that businesses buy or extract themselves. In sum, they're all the stock that hasn't been used for manufacturing yet. For your accounting, raw materials are considered an inventory asset, with a debit to raw materials and credit to accounts payable. There are two different categories of raw materials, direct and indirect. The formula to calculate the total cost of your raw materials inventory is, total raw materials equals beginning inventory plus purchases added, ending inventory. Let's say you own a scooter manufacturing company. For this quarter, your starting inventory was worth $20,000. During this period, you bought $34,000 worth of raw materials. At the end of this quarter, your raw materials on hand were $18,000. Total equals $20,000 plus $34,000 to $18,000 equals $36,000. Direct raw materials are all the materials that make up the finished product. For example, all the parts used to make a bed would be considered direct raw materials, from the wood to the metal frame and components like screws. Indirect raw materials are materials that are consumed during the manufacturing process but aren't a part of the final product. Things like cleaning and office supplies, disposable tools, lubricants, and tape are examples of items that could be considered indirect raw materials. The raw materials are then sent through various processes to become something more. They're shaped, cut, molded, and transformed. This is where our second type of inventory comes in, work in process or WIP. WIP represents all the goods that are in the production process but not yet finished. It's the partially assembled bike, the half-stitched shirt, or the computer without its final pieces. It's a crucial step in our journey from raw materials to finished goods. WIP inventory includes the cost of raw materials, labor, and overhead costs needed to manufacture a finished product. Taking time to classify WIP inventory in a warehouse waiting to be assembled might seem tedious, but it's crucial for monitoring and improving your supply chain and inventory control. As we mentioned earlier, holding on to excessive WIP inventory is usually not beneficial for a business's bottom line. There are a few reasons for this. WIP inventory eats up space in a storage space or factory floor that could otherwise be used for inventory that's ready to sell, thus increasing carrying costs. The more WIP you have on hand, the more capital you have tied up in items waiting to be sold. Too much WIP inventory increases the risk of materials becoming lost, broken, expired, or obsolete before they have a chance to be assembled. The formula for calculating work-in-process inventory is as follows, work-in-process inventory equals total cost of manufacturing plus beginning work-in-process inventory, ending work-in-process inventory. Let's say you start the year with $10,000 worth of raw materials. You incur $300,000 in manufacturing costs and produce finished goods at a cost of $250,000. Your WIP inventory formula would look like this sad face $10,000 plus $300,000, $250,000 equals $60,000. Once the work in process inventory is complete, we finally arrive at our finished goods. These are the products that are ready for sale, all neatly packaged and ready to go. The finished goods inventory formula is simple but requires knowing key numbers about your current production. Here is the formula to calculate your finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory equals beginning finished goods inventory plus cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods manufactured, COGM, 
is the total amount spent to produce items ready for sale during a specific period. The calculation for COGM is, COGM equals, beginning WIP inventory plus total manufacturing cost, ending WIP inventory. Note that total manufacturing costs is equal to direct labor, direct materials, and overhead costs. Cost of goods sold, COGS, is the total direct costs of producing the items sold during a specific period. It includes only direct costs, such as labor and materials, but not indirect expenses, like rent or utilities. The calculation for COGS is, COGS equals, beginning inventory plus purchases during the period, minus ending inventory. To see how the finished goods formula is used in manufacturing, say a golf equipment manufacturing company had $100,000 in finished goods inventory at the end of the last period. This period, their COGM is $150,000 and their COGS is $120,000. The company arrives at its finished goods inventory using the calculation below, $130,000 equals $100,000 plus, $150,000, $120,000. But the journey doesn't end there. These finished goods now become part of our final type of inventory. They're stored and managed until they're ready to be shipped to the customer. Every step of the way, inventory management plays a crucial role. It ensures that the right amount of raw materials are available, that work-in-process inventory is kept on track, and that finished goods are delivered in a timely manner. Without proper inventory management, the journey from raw materials to finished goods could become a chaotic mess. It's all about maintaining a balance between having enough stock to meet demand, but not so much that it leads to wastage or a cash flow crisis. Inventory management isn't just about storing goods. It's also about understanding the flow of products, predicting demand, and making smart decisions based on data. Whether it's the raw materials waiting to be shaped, the work-in-process items being transformed, or the finished goods ready for delivery, each type of inventory serves a distinct purpose in the production cycle. In the end, the ultimate goal of inventory management is to ensure that the right product is in the right place at the right time. And that, dear viewers, is the fascinating journey of a product from raw materials to finished goods. So, the next time you hold a product in your hands, take a moment to appreciate the journey it has undertaken. It's a journey of transformation, of careful management, and of a lot of hard work.